Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. It's time for Haunter's Podcast, a show dedicated to Halloween Horror Nights, haunted attractions, and all things spooky. Here are your hosts, Mr. Wonderful, Zach Hilton, and Brooke Hilton. Welcome into a very brand new episode of Hunter's Podcast. I am Zach Solo right now because everybody's enjoying the holiday weekend. I hope you're having a fun-filled adventure weekend or just chilling out. Maybe you don't celebrate this. I don't know. I don't know what you do, but what I do know is that the entire Hunter's team has been going crazy all weekend, doing family things, doing marathons. So it's been hard to uh, get together so we could finish this episode but we did grab a wonderful interview carrie williams from granton manor haunt which you can find them on facebook instagram they even have a website grantonmanorhaunt.com um it it sounds like a wonderful time that they have down there and we have a great interview with carrie which is coming up right now i hope you have a safe and wonderful holiday weekend and we will catch you next week with more spooky around the corner All right, everybody. Well, we're about to get into a wicked interview. Uh, Spooky season is around the corner. And if you're in Somerville, South Carolina, we got some haunts for you. We have a wonderful guest today. We have Carrie Williams of Grayton. Grant and Manor Haunt. G-R-A-N-T-O-N. Yep. Yeah, Great Manor Haunt. I don't, hey, I'm the worst at pronouncing stuff. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> he I need to uh, <laughs> give it off to you. Grant. <laughs> um, yeah. No so, so welcome on the Hunter's Podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, guys. Oh, no, we appreciate you coming on. Um, I really want to get into the like, legacy of your haunt like I want to start with where did this idea come from because we've done a little bit of research we've seen that it's actually a home haunt we've had uh, a documentarian person come on who's went through home haunt so it was kind of wild to see that you put one on yourself where did this idea come from I, well, my parents kind of threw me into this when I was a kid and there was someone in my neighborhood who kind of did the same thing, but on a smaller scale, scared the Mm -hmm. shit out of me, but I was thrilled about it. So (laughs) (laughs) same thing with hard nights. They took me when I was a child, probably shouldn't have gone at 12, but I did. And here we are now, but um, you were, you were fine. Yeah. You were fine. It's 13 and up, right? 13 and up. So one year prior, it's fine. Exactly. It's like the one to the pool, like you're either going to sink or swim. Right. So (laughs) I swim, I swim this little (laughs) weird swim, but (laughs) I've just been super into all things uh, Halloween horror and getting a good scare out of people kind of started in 2016 in our old neighborhood and then just became super scalable. And last year we had about 5,000 people in two nights here, um, which has gone pretty nuts. Our demented theme of, of everything is always, uh, gore based, gore based with like a psycho mentality behind it. So you get a couple of layers of like, um, maybe Ted Bundy, but then the feel of gore, um, you see it, you feel it. I mean, we have body parts with appendages, like penises and stuff like that. <laughs> things that when you walk through and you see it and you can smell it along the same lines of horror nights, it creates this separate act atmosphere and it's mainly for obviously people 18 and up because our actors curse um are, am i allowed to say the p word yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah say whatever you want yeah so they'll say hey get out of here you fucking pussies like they get in your face and they create an element that's a little bit different we don't like to censor them other than obviously no touching but 
we tend to get more people or we're seeing we get more people who like that extra element of fear. And mm-hmm. so I've kind of just taken things on small scale, learned how to make my own props mechanics. And now we have uh, custom pneumatic props coming from unit 70 and um, large productions like that, that aid in the element of scare. And we're donation based. We work with Berkeley Animal Center. So portion of our proceeds go back to them. So the old, the end all be all or the end game would be to have our old facility so we can kind of run this 365 and do like a my bloody valentine massacre kind of haunt but be able to continue to give back to the community at the same time because there's nothing really around here like that so yeah, yeah. that's kind of where we're at yeah yeah that's pretty we weird. That's cool that's cool yeah. um, uh, so I'm kind of curious. You said that you you learned to make your own props and stuff like that. Yes. Did you have any experience? Like, did you ever work at a haunt prior to this, or did you just when you were like, "Yeah, we're doing this," like then it was experimentation. How do I make these gory props? How do I make this a thing? Or did you have a little bit of like theater background as well? No, no theater background. I just started YouTubing um, how to make silicone prosthetics, um, being able to create a mold doing like small scars and things like that out of clay and then creating a positive and negative of that and being able to create my own prosthetics and then it became larger props like giant torsos um, learning how to airbrush and hand paint to create bruising and so forth and then after that the mechanical side is pretty much self-explanatory via um, via youtube you can get all your answers through there so I just kind of winged it until I got the hang of it. And now I just make some really sick things like like <laughs> boobs that have nipples falling off and things that just make you uncomfortable. Yeah. It's supposed to make you feel that pain. So we, I, and I enjoy it. And then I keep them all, which is a little bit sick, but here we are. <laughs> you, you, you always have designs for Halloween season. You'll always be the cool house. Uh, yeah, well, or the crazy one, whichever one. <laughs> How, so obviously, you know, I know you, that you have said that you want to get um, like a place, but how do your neighbors feel with your haunt? Because I mean, 5,000 people in two days <laughs> is insane. And I see that you have like food trucks and things there. So mm-hmm. that yeah. that is definitely a large production. I know like there's a house um, that does a Christmas thing and they have to get like police involved and it can get very brutal on some of our uh um you know facebook chats <laughs> like, yeah. like if you yeah. guys don't settle down we're gonna have to not have the event tonight type thing so how does yeah. that run with your neighborhood uh we've got one karen i like to call her country source she's, <laughs> she's just so fantastic um she, she called she spreads the word that we're satanists um because we oh, like wow. so so now we just go with it and kind of pace up and down the sidewalk and you know play some clips from the original exorcist through the jbl just to kind of piss her off <laughs> oh absolutely but, um, other than that you know with getting cane bay is so large and we're a golf cart community so instead of having to get a babysitter or you know worry about drinking and driving people can come out on their golf carts and it's something that's just donation based for the community so they're pretty grateful that there's something for there is a kids area where this year they have jelly ball which is a form of paintball it's called the killer clown haunt so there's things for kids too so I think that that kind of helps out with people getting annoyed but there's always going to be those individuals that are annoyed and with 15 rotating food trucks and we do have two alcohol trucks on site um 21 and over duh Um, (laughs) (laughs) just put that out there people seem to bitch less about it yeah (laughs) right yeah at the end of the day you know as we continue to grow we're gonna have to move it off site so there's a big business plan in in the making right now for a large investor to come in so that we can make it both a um, indoor haunt as well as a trail. Oh, Um, wow. Yeah. So we're trying not to piss people off as much as we can, but we're very thankful for our community. Um, We do have cops on site. We do have permits and things that are pulled in order to, to do this. And we do it on the weekends. Um, 
that way we kind of don't hinder with people's work days or travel plans. And this year there is going to be a shuttle bus to get people to and from. Um, and I hope that that helps with parking, but yeah, wow. we have to change it up to try to accommodate every single year. So wow. thank you everyone. <laughs> That's not, yeah, no. And I mean, and I think, <laughs> I think that it, it's, it's amazing that, you know, not only do you have, you know, your neighborhood haunt, but in all honesty, it's, found so much more than that. And the fact that you guys give back as much as you do and accommodating, um, especially to the kids. And I know I saw some, some things about the teal pumpkin, um, Mm -hmm. which is just in, in my book is very fantastic to kind of work through and work around. And I love that it's kind of like the paintball with the kids and just kind of intermingling more that as much as, you know, haunts are scary and, uh, you know, you can, go through obviously as being older Mm -hmm. but with the the younger crowd bringing them in if you don't if you don't have a t-shirt by brooks selling over here haunts are for the kids Uh, (laughs) (laughs) no i'm just saying slowly bringing kids in because i i do feel like you know, if you wait for so long, then you end up having Karens that yes. only think that haunts are, demonic. you know, demonic and they're not meant to be that way. It's supposed to be scary, but also fun. Yeah. Also, this was a gotcha but- interview. Welcome to the Christian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, we're here to talk about the exorcist now <laughs> yeah, well, i'm glad you brought that up wonderful so last year's haunt you guys had like halloween you had exorcist um mm-hmm. and this will come out before or after june 30th so i don't mind spilling this but on it, your instagram you did a little hint skis to mm-hmm. talk about your first ip which is obviously beetlejuice um yes. so that's pretty exciting like how many IPs do you plan on like having also, is it like just one room of each part of the haunt or is it like you spend a lot of time in each area? They're separate entities. So this year's, it's going to be called Beetle Geist. It's kind mm-hmm. of a wicked ah. twist on Beetlejuice okay. for copyright purposes and to just kind of create something more fun in there. That will be something that is, rated pg for the kids and the parents there is there is a uh we want the kids to experience one large walkthrough where they can get the the treats from the teal pumpkin little slap bracelets and things like that um so that ip i mean it still runs off of beetlejuice absolutely but we do have a wicked twist coming with that so we'll keep that one under wraps but right. there is a uh, a kids shoot almost like at disney's where like there's like a kid swap area where the parents can say okay well you can take them over to the craft table and we're going to go through the rest of it so after that one we we have a 12 foot claustrophobic tunnel which has oh, two nope. ladders i'm sure you've been through those right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm already struggling so breathing funny. over here. <laughs> Wait, did you you mean like those tubes that get tight or the tubes that spin? Though they're two bladders that kind of come together, like you're watching oh, yes. a giant butt cheek almost. <laughs> <laughs> yep. A giant butt crack is kind of what it is, but there's okay. no way you have to go forward. And because you know, obviously <sighs> for scare actors, there you scare from the rear. Oh, pun intended. Hell yeah. hey, this this <laughs> sounds like my type of haunt. <laughs> For an extra $10. No. <laughs> VIP plus. I love it. <laughs> so that will, uh, that will flush people through to the next area. Um, we're, there's one thing that we do keep the same. And one of the biggest fears we find is clowns. So we always play from that each year. But mm-hmm. each um, haunt portion is about 20 by 40 and with the final one having a bigger exit because that's how we chase them out whether you know it's with a dirt bike or whatever with dirt bike people with weapons oh. under so forth. Yeah. Um, it's different rooms in one giant area but we have tour guides to kind of section it off and make sure that people are in smaller groups so that we can accurately scare them from the top the floor, from the ceiling the floor behind and in the middle um to keep them moving forward mm-hmm. but um we play off of ips last year we went off of mo- all ips yeah. this year we have a couple of our own 
and we're going to start coming up with the story of Great and Manor Haunt and create, I guess, an icon, if you will. Um, and that way we can do more with that and build off of that. But yeah, that's so, really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Uh, I, I was curious if if you were going to start because I, I saw the I guess it was from last year, uh, the interview that you did with the local news uh, down there mm-hmm. and you were dressed as Beetlejuice, which was awesome. <laughs> Uh, but I noticed you had mentioned a bunch of IPs. So I was curious about that. If, if it was all IPs and twist on IPs because of copyright, or if you guys did have a little creative team and we're coming up with your own original stories. So that's really cool. Yeah. We're, uh, we're working on coming up with a story that's going to make sense as it runs through the year. And I always want to keep the same icon with whomever we come up with, uh, as a large presence, I don't want it to ever get lost. I don't want you to lose, let's say the usher. I want you to know who the icon is and let's play off of that. And then that way we can create multiple stories and then tie in like things that were missed from, let's say year one, you know, there's, there's things you can kind of hold off on almost like doing a sequel or a prequel and say, well, actually before this was born, you know, Mm, so I think in my head, that's what I'm working towards it's Mm -hmm. a I guess weird situation or an effed up situation I I guess the story that I'm trying to come up with but if I think that if you can just keep the the constant then you can continue to play with variable variables and I think that having the initial icon is going to create that constant and give us more room to play with yeah for sure because then you can be in control of all of the storytelling and like, again, like merch and stuff like that. Cause you guys sound like you're just, you're doing that kind of HHN experience because I've, I've come up mm-hmm. here and I said all the time that like, I love haunts, but haunts are always like you go in and then you're done within a half hour. Mm-hmm. And then where does your night go? Where it right. sounds like what you're trying to produce is that kind of all night event. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like if you're wanting to do a date night, you know, most people that attend haunts are individuals going on dates. They're going to come around 9 p.m. So you want to kind of plan it out so where you can have them hang out a little bit longer. And so that's why we have food trucks, uh, alcohol trucks. We have print on demand merch trucks as well as collectible merch trucks and mm-hmm. vendors. So if you're wanting to shop around for something cool, um, there's a, a lady that makes like crocheted um, horror dolls and things like that. I'm trying to get some voodoo dolls in and maybe have like a fortune teller, something that just kind of keeps with the theme. So you guys can have fun out here and not just, okay, now what do we do? Right. Um, And that's what I want to carry over into the larger area as well as, you know, Halloween is the best holiday of all time, hands down. Don't try me on that one. Um, I won't. (laughs) (laughs) Christmas can't compete. Okay. Christmas freaks. Yeah. 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 We're talking to you. (laughs) Because we know that's a big majority of our listeners. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we just want to create something that gives you more I guess get you more amped up about and you pass it on to your kids or like your family members like Halloween is an activity there's something to do and we want to create that whole experience for your entire night and if you want to come back awesome right nice um my other question is like (laughs) it does sound like you are very hands-on yourself do you have a team that you work with is it like you know uh your husband you're like you're doing this deal with it jack (laughs) <laughs> like is it is it uh a neighborhood thing outside of karen <laughs> uh yeah so the man meat does participate um <laughs> we, we fight all the time because i need him to come build things and, and stuff like that and we have some awesome neighbors that are hands-on i have um, a couple of people that work on tech for me which is nice and a social media marketing team and a virtual assistant um the rest are just like family and friends that can help when they can, at least with the build. And then once we get the actors in, we go through um, character training as well as uh, dress rehearsals. And then we go from there. This year we do have a, an event coordinator. So people aren't, you know, pulling at me all the time, you know, where 
where's this? What's that? You know, it just becomes overwhelming. So I'm excited to bring her on. She's awesome. Her name's Joni. Shout out to Joni. But uh, yeah, so we're just a small team that's getting bigger and bigger as we go. And having friends that have been with us since you know, some of our actors since 2016, which doesn't seem like that far, but you know, with, with us, it has been, Absolutely. it means a lot. Yeah. And, and there's a trust that goes with that. Um, you know, one of like last year, one of our masks was about 600 bucks and I only trusted one with one person to wear it. So it's, you know, these teams that come together voluntarily just because they love it. And they're just good people that have created this awesome startup. And we will always have them with us as long as they would love to be. And then from there, go and get, you know, the pros that we need, like the high tech team to run all of the audio and, and all of the video with the DMX and all that crap. I don't know that much about that. They have to do that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, as we grow, but we're very <laughs> grateful and lucky that we have come into contact with these individuals and their friends, their family. And that's who we're with right now. Yeah. That's awesome. And I, I do have to say, I think it's really cool that, that you guys team up with, it's nonprofits, correct? Like you help out like animal mm -hmm. shelters and, and in the area. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we work with exclusively Berkeley Animal Center. Um, we take donations on their behalf, 365. So people can come drop off uh, dry canned goods, uh, whatever, or blankets or whatever at, at my house at any time. And I always get it back to them. Um, but for that month so for halloween we do this year we're doing two adoptions on site and so they come on friday between four and six thirty i think this year their time slots mm. um and they do an open adoption and they bring these awesome adoptable puppies and last year i think four of their dogs got adopted within cane bay and one is actually my neighbor's dog now. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So it's it's really awesome to be able to help out as much as we can. And then a portion of our campaign proceeds from the Grant Manor Haunt t-shirts, as well as just the proceeds from the donations that come in, goes to them to help out for, you know, medical supplies and, you know, just food or whatever they need or whatever they need to use it for. And right. they're just an awesome awesome team of individuals over there and they work their asses off to try to, to make sure they can keep those shelters clear but they're becoming overrun and we're just trying to do what we can to help out so we always put um an adoptable dog featured on our page every month um and in hopes that someone will pick it up because yeah. these animals need help so yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's so cool that's that's it's it's go you could go to a haunt get scared and walk away with a new member of your family. Like that's really yeah, exactly. awesome. Absolutely. A, a support animal. There yeah. You go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> An emotional support animal. <laughs> after, Re after Regan terrifies you and spits the pea soup on you, go, go adopt a dog. They'll lick up the pea soup. And mm -hmm. then you'll, you know, you'll have a buddy for life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. See, and you know what? You're marketing now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was going to say uh, it would be kind of cool if it, do you guys dress the dogs up in like little Michael Myers costumes or Freddy Krueger or Jason? Uh, last year they did um, okay. <laughs> a Nightmare Before Christmas and like a lobster. But this year I'm hoping that we can get something made for them, um, like little shirts or something that won't cause any anxiety but yeah i'm hoping to do <laughs> yeah. like i we are doing um custom leashes and stuff this year for those that adopt the dog you'll get like a package to walk away with because you know when you get a dog you need things like a crate yes. and all that so yeah. we will be doing like grant and manor uh shirts and a leash when they walk away so that'll be cool that is so amazing. Um, wow, what a good haunt. This is like, seriously. <laughs> it's a feel-good haunt. What yeah. a feel-good haunt, yeah. Walk through a tunnel of butt and then come out with a dog. I mean. <laughs> they don't call it doggy style for nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, for more information, I mean, you have a website that you can go to, granitemanor.com. You have a Facebook. You have an Instagram tickets seem to be what 10 for regular ticket uh, donation and then 25 for VIP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is there any uh, other information you want to uh, relay to the listeners if they want to come down to uh, visit this on? Because I'm telling you, you're winning me over with all the like goody goody about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, yeah, well, you know, just go to grantmanorhawk.com for updates on adoptable pets. And if you have any questions or you want to shoot me an email or just, you know, want to get a hold of someone in charge of adoptions at Berkeley Animal Center, of course, feel free to shoot an email over to, to Grant and Manor Haunt under contact us. Um, but if you're coming down for the haunt, just prepare to have a good time. We'll update everything on all of our social media platforms. We are going to be starting TikTok, which, or TikTok, I'm 37 year old person. I shouldn't have this, but here we are. Um, yeah. As, yeah, a the club. as a 39 year old, I feel you. <laughs> As a, I, uh, as a 34 I, year old who constantly gets screamed at by his real job daily, make more TikToks. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> well, that strip club's not going to run itself, pal. <laughs> exactly. Promote, promote, promote. Exactly. Uh, before we let you go, um, one of the conversations we first had is that you went to HHN and stuff. Do, do you plan to go to HHN 31 this year? Hell yeah. We're going to be there the 11th through the 15th this oh, wow. year. I am doing the unmasking the tour, which in mm. I haven't, I mean, I've been going since Tales from the Crypt. So what's that? 95 and 96. Yeah. yeah. I've never done an unmasking the tour. And I, last year I made the, our RIP or our VIP RIP tour guide, take us through Texas chainsaw three times. So I can look at that damn pig prop that was on there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, again, again. Um, yeah, That's my, amazing. My friends hate me, but that's more, more. Uh, more. I gotta go I'm again. picturing. I gotta I'm just picturing the rise, uh, the, the rise of Skywalker right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're Kylo running this right now. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh! Yeah, yeah so, so we're we're doing the unmasking tour as yeah. well. This is our first time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're going. We're two, actually two of them. Down. Two yeah. of them are. Yeah, we're going down September 21st, something yeah. like that. Yes. Um, so we're we're doing it for the first time. The only extra things we've ever done were the uh, scare actor dining. Yeah. And I oh. really hope they bring that back because that is such an adventure that if you've never done it, I highly suggest. Uh, are yeah. you looking for the Minions to- Cafe? Yeah, in the <laughs> Minions Cafe. So are you? <laughs> Are you looking forward to uh, both announcements or three announcements? Yeah. I'm sorry, of the houses. Yes. Well, I'm also like annoyed because we're just taking forever. And I know. It's and and then I hate I. I hate looking at the Facebook groups because spec maps are so so fucking stupid. I hate them with passion. <laughs> um, and I, I'm just curious as why we're focusing on like spec maps and like scare zones. Like, just give us, like, give us the next house. Like, especially with the release of the Freaky combined with the Black Phone. I'm like, Freaky's so stupid. Now I'm annoyed. <laughs> it's, it's just the dumbest movie I've ever seen, and I'm just mad at Vince Vaughn for even entertaining it. But um, <laughs> damn, you heard it here. House. Yeah, <laughs> not behind but, a paywall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm pumped for another announcement. I am um, a Halloween OG. You know, Michael, my, I find him highly attractive, as weird as that is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's the <jump> William <laughs> Shatner. Well, I was going to say it was William Shatner's face, but yeah, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think because he doesn't say anything and he's a dude and he just sits there, he just he's really intrigued with you and he shuts up. It's like, Oh, okay. You're, you're great. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. He likes to watch. Well, Gary, Gary, absolutely love talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm very excited uh, about <laughs> your haunt. I really hope you get 10,000 people, especially for Karen. Karen needs to know. Um, Karen needs to go. She does need to go. Karen needs to go. <laughs> to go. Karen, Karen needs, needs to go. To go. <laughs> Evil dies tonight. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> um, I might get but, a campaign shirt. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we look forward to sharing all your social media stuff. When you post like, um, you know, announcement or whatever, we will probably share it on our stories. And hopefully that gets you like a bump or something to make it 10,005. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'm here for that. <laughs> uh, Carrie, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on, uh, you know, down on the, the hot side. No, the hot side. Maybe we'll see you at HHN. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Come back on the <laughs> Over 11th to the 15th. Yep. All right. You have a good one and get well. <laughs> <laughs>